GMS Mailbag, here to feed the elect through the spirit and power of Yahweh Hashem Yahushai. Welcome to another lesson. Now this is a, another perspective at looking at the Cornelius issue. And it begins in Acts, the 11th chapter, beginning at the first verse. It says, uh, now we're in the book of Acts, the 11th chapter. We're going to skip certain verses and pretty much in the interest of time go right to the point. Now beginning at the first verse it says, And the apostles and brethren that were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also received the word of the Heavenly Father. Now if we take a look at this map here, so we can get an idea of uh, uh, what is happening here. Now we know in the book of Acts, the 10th chapter, that Peter went to Caesarea and uh, Caesarea is located right here and he, there he encountered as he was directed by the spirit there he encountered a man by the name of Cornelius all right now from from Jerusalem to Caesarea is about 30 miles you know there's a uh, some uh, maps have uh, equated the scale at being 30 miles now this area of Jerusalem here is also known as the parish or the province of Judea, as you can see on the map. As a matter of fact, if we read here, it says Peter goes to Cornelius' house in Caesarea. Now Cornelius' house would be located right around here, Caesarea. So this is way outside of Jerusalem. Now if you know anything about the history of Israel, the Israelites that were scattered among the nations that were considered or being called Gentiles, which the word Gentile means foreigner, the ones that were scattered way outside of the province of Judea were considered as another nation, or they were considered as heathens, all right, especially those that were not in the faith, as was the case of uh, Cornelius. When Peter went to Cornelius, pretty much Peter introduced Cornelius to the truth the true faith, the 100% faith, starting with the belief in a man called Yahweh Shai. All right, so anyway, let's um, X out of that. Let's go back to the first verse. And, and the apostles and brethren that were in Judea, now you have an idea. Again, let's bring the map. Now you have an idea of where Judea is located, the province of Judea, which con contains Jerusalem, which is the capital city, which is where the 12 originally were. All right, the nucleus of uh, of the twelve was here. The twelve apostles they lived here in Jerusalem. All right, so uh, reading on it says, "Heard that the Gentiles, which in this case, going back to the tenth chapter of Acts, that's uh, uh, the Israelite foreigners, which were located over here in Caesarea. Uh, case in point, Cornelius and the men that were with him. All right." This is what Acts the 11th chapter, the first verse is talking about. Heard that the Gentiles had also received the word of the Heavenly Father. And when Peter was come up to Jerusalem, they that were of the circumcision contended with him. Now what that means is, an, an example of that is the rest of the 12, like the 11 apostles and the men that were with them. They would be considered of the circumcision. Those are the ones that knew the laws, statutes, and commandments. And when Peter came back from Caesarea, when he went back to Jerusalem, the rest of the apostles contended with him. All right? And this is what they said, saying, Thou wentest into men uncircumcised, and didst eat with them. Now the men that were uncircumcised were the Israelite foreigners who had left those traditions. If we go back to the history, if we go back to Alexander the, uh, the Creep, and the Ptolemies, you had Israelites that made a covenant with those heathens. And in the process of time, forgot about the customs that they were introduced to by our forefather Moses. So they became, like the saying over here, they became men uncircumcised. One of the customs they forgot was the custom of circumcision, which was given to our forefather Abraham. All right, so when this is saying, thou wentest in to men uncircumcised and didst eat with them, those are the Israelites that forgot about their customs, which goes back to Alexander the Creep. 
You read about the term called Helen. Those were Israelites that adopted the Greek ways and the Greek fashion, the Greek ways of dressing, the Greek language, which even in the book, Nature Knows No Color Line, there's a quote where it says that it was better that the favorite quote of the Jews, which would be living here in Jerusalem, in the province of Judea, a favorite quote from them was, it is better to eat pork than to speak Greek. Now, not every Israelite felt like that. You had Israelites that adopted the ways of the Greeks and the customs of the Greeks. We find that in the book of First Maccabees in the Apocrypha. All right, so those were the men that were uncircumcised. So when they heard, or the Jews, that is, heard that they received the word of the Heavenly Father, they got mad. They said, you went unto these uncircumcised men and you didn't eat with them, Peter? What's wrong with you, Peter? You know, that's basically what, what, what they were saying. So as you read the fourth verse, but Peter re rehearsed the matter from the beginning and expounded it by order unto them, saying, so Peter's going to get into the vision and he's going to explain what happened and why he went to those men and how the Spirit led him to go to those men. Now, this is where we pick it up, pick up the lesson now. Uh, Acts the 11 chapter and the 14 verse. And you brothers can go and read this chapter, you know, and um, you can uh, get into the story. Who shall tell thee, now this is what the, the as a matter of fact, let's start at the 12 verse. Let's start at the 11 verse. And behold, immediately there went three men already come unto the house where I was sent from Caesarea unto me. And the Spirit bade, those men were from Cornelius, all right, and they came unto Peter, who at that time Peter was in uh, Judea, in Jerusalem, right? So reading on, it says, And the Spirit bade me to go with them, to go where with them? Go back to, to go to a... Uh, Caesarea. You know, I keep showing you this map so you can get a visual of what's going on. You know, after all, we think in pictures. So I want you to get a visual of what's going on here. So Peter's leaving Jerusalem and he's going to Caesarea. All right? Back in the 12th verse. And the Spirit bade me to go with them, nothing doubting. Moreover, these six brethren accompanied me and we entered into the man's house at Caesarea. And there was six brethren who went along with Peter, making a total of seven. All right, so let's read on. And he showed us how he had seen an angel in his house, which stood and said unto him, Send men to Joppa, and call for Simon, whose surname is Peter, who shall tell thee words whereby thou and all thy house shall be saved. So you're going to tell me now that the other nations... You know, and assuming that this Cornelius is of another nation, you're going to tell me that the other nations are going to be saved? The only way somebody can be saved is through Yahweh Shai. It's not Yahweh Shai's name, Yahweh Shai, which means he is the deliverer, he is the savior. Since when is Yahweh Shai going to save any other nation? What scripture is that? Yahweh Shai is the savior of Israel, man. Point blank in the story. The, the word Yahweh Shai or the name Yahweh Shai is Norman Omen for he is the deliverer. He is the savior of what nation? The nation of Israel. That's the only nation he's coming to save. What did he tell that woman? He said, I am sent unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. All right. That's in the book of Matthew, the 15th chapter, the 24th verse. So the words that Peter had, which was given to him by Yahweh Shai, he told Cornelius those words. Why? So Cornelius and his household shall be saved. Let's read it again. Who shall tell thee words whereby thou, Cornelius, and all thy house, which was present with Cornelius, shall be saved. Read on the 15th verse. And as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell on them as on us at the beginning. Again, again. I ask you brothers out there, you're going to tell me that the other nations are going to receive the Holy Spirit like we have received the Holy Spirit? In, in particular, the so-called white man is going to receive the Holy Spirit as we have received the Holy Spirit? So what's the difference then? If that's the case, then there's no difference between us and the so-called white man. Even though it tells you in the book of Deuteronomy 7, chapter the 6th verse, that we're above every nation on the planet earth, which includes the nation of Edom, the Edomites, which is the so-called white people. We're above them. 
So how the hell can they receive the Holy Spirit like we have received the Holy Spirit? Let's read the 15 verse again. And as I began to speak, this is Peter. Remember, this is Peter talking to the Israelites or the rest of the apostles over here in Judea when he came back from uh, Caesarea. All right, he's speaking to him and he's expounding to him what happened to him at Caesarea. All right, and he's telling them how the Israelite foreigners at Caesarea received the Holy Spirit just like they had received the Holy Spirit when Yahushai taught them. All right, the 15 verse, and as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell on them as on us at the beginning. All right, now I just want to show you, um, let's take another example. Let's take a look at the book of John. I'll show you that the Holy Spirit came on them when Yahushai spoke to them meaning the apostles. This is the book of John, the 20, 20th chapter, beginning at the 22nd verse. It says this, it says, And when he had said this, that he is Yahushai, he breathed on them, and saith unto them, Receive ye the Holy Spirit. The 23rd verse, Whose sins, or whosoever sins ye remit, they are remitted unto them. And whosoever sins ye retain, they are retained. Now we know, according to the scriptures, the only sins that can be forgiven is the sins of the nation of Israel. And not just the nation of Israel, the elect of the nation of Israel. Their sins can only be forgiven because they're the only ones that are going to receive the Holy Spirit when it says, Receive ye the Holy Spirit. So if we jump back to the book of Acts, the 11th chapter, the 15th verse, Peter said, and Peter was the witness, Peter said that they, meaning Cornelius and the gang that was with him, the men that was with him, he said they received the Holy Spirit even as he received the Holy Spirit. Let's read the 15 verse again. And as, and as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell on them as on us at the beginning. Now that's plain. You can't get around that. All right. Now for you to say that all the other nations can receive the Holy Spirit like we have received the Holy Spirit is just pure madness. And then that would make the book of Romans, the 11th chapter, the 33rd verse, null and, null and void. Where it says that, how unsearchable are the judgments of the Heavenly Father and His ways past finding out. That's in Romans, the 11th chapter, the 33rd verse, where it speaks about the depth and the riches of the Heavenly Father. How unsearchable are His judgments and His ways past finding out, which He has given to the elect. That's why it's such it's such great riches. He hasn't given that to 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 any other nation but the nation of Israel in particular the elect of the nation of Israel alright so as a matter of fact let's uh, take a look at this book the book of Isaiah 42 and 8 to expound upon that this is Isaiah 42 and 8 I am the Lord that is my name in the Hebrew if we go to the Hebrew let's go to the Hebrew as you know there are those that don't like the Hebrew there are those that say we don't have the Hebrew I am the Lord you see the word there, Yahweh. All right. So his name is Yahweh, and his son's name is Yahweh Shai. I am the Lord; that is my name, and my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. Now, in the book of Psalms ninety-six and five, we know that the other nations worship graven images. So the Lord said he will not give his praise, which is, which is this knowledge, to graven images. In, in, in a sense, he's saying he will not give his praise to the other nations. And he clearly says over here, his glory, which his glory is this truth, this, this knowledge, this wisdom, this understanding, will he not give to another, meaning another nation. So that's plain, all right? So if we go back to Acts now, the ones that received the Holy Spirit, were the Israelite foreigners that were living over here in Caesarea, which is about 30 miles outside of Jerusalem, when you do the research. Reading on, it says, Then remembered I the word of the Lord, how that he said, John indeed baptized with water, talking about John the Baptist, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Now what is the Holy Spirit? John 6 and 63. Yahushua clearly said the Holy Spirit are these words that he, is, that he is teaching, which the words are located in the scriptures, which is only given to the Israelites. All right. Reading on the 17th verse. For as much then as the Most High gave them the like gift. Who's the them? Well, let's go back to the map. I'm going to keep showing that map 
Why? Because I want to burn this image into your brain. The dem were the Israelites, in particular Cornelius and the men that were with him that were living over here in Caesarea. Or Caesarea, I'm sorry, Caesarea. All right. For as much then as the Most High gave them the like gift. What is the like gift? Go back to Romans 11.33. This knowledge, this truth, this understanding. For as much then as the Most High gave them the like gift as he did unto us. Who is the us? Peter and the rest of the apostles. Who believed on the Lord Yahweh Shai. So now, are you going to tell me? That all the other nations, in particular the nation of Edom, believe on the Lord Yahweh Shai? Can you not see that that's talking about the Israelites that were scattered among the nations that did not know that they were Israelites, that had to be born again back to their customs, their uh, ways, their high holy days, their ceremonies? Can you not see that? For as much then as the Most High gave them the like gift as he did unto us who believed on the Lord Yahweh Shai, the only people that can believe on the Lord Yahweh Shai is the nation of Israel, in particular the elect of the nation of Israel. All right, point blank, end of story. And Cornelius evidently was part of that elect. Even way back then, even more than 2,000 years ago, he was part of that elect. That's why an angel came to him. That's why Peter came to him to, to graft him back into the fold, the fold of the elect. Reading on, it says, For as much then as the Most High gave them the like gift as he did unto us who believed on the Lord Yahweh Shai, what was I that could withstand the Most High? Here, yeah, regardless of how Peter felt about Cornelius and the rest of the men that were with him, Peter could not withstand the Most High because it was the Most High's good pleasure to gather his elect from all the tribes, not the, just the tribe of Judah, but from all the tribes, all the different tribes. Now the scriptures doesn't tell us what tribes those Israelite foreigners may have been because we know that there were other tribes back then as well. We know that you had the tribe of Asher. You had a certain woman that was back there. She was from the tribe of Asher. Could certain members that were back there with Cornelius be of a different tribe? We don't know. But we do know that they were Israelites. That's the most important thing. So no matter how they were dressed, no matter how they looked, like Peter is saying here, I could not withstand the power of the Lord if this Holy Spirit fell on them like it fell on us. And if Peter would have withstood them, then that would have made Peter a hypocrite. It would also make Peter unrighteous. It would also make Peter wicked. Uh, just like certain guys that claim they're in the truth, but they'll withheld the truth from a guy, even if the guy shows that he's understanding the word, shows that he can get into it, but because of the way he looks or because of the way he might dress or whatever, you'll have certain guys will reject teaching him. That's being wicked, man. All right? Just like Peter said, let's read it again. For as much then as the Most High gave them the like gift as he did unto us, who believed on the Lord Yahweh Shai, what was I that I could withstand the Heavenly Father? When they heard these things, meaning the rest of the apostles, and the men that were with the apostles, the rest of them, when they heard these things, back in Jerusalem, back in the province of, uh, uh, the province of Judea, when they heard these things, they held their peace and glorified the Heavenly Father, saying, Then have the Heavenly Father also to the Gentiles. Now you understand what that Gentile word means there. The Israelite foreigners. In this case, the group of Israelites that were back there with Cornelius living in Caesarea, which were being called Gentiles, which means foreigners, by the Israelites living over here in Jerusalem. All right, it's plain as day. When they heard these things, they held their peace. Yeah, they could not say nothing. They could not say nothing against Peter and how Peter had taught them because it was the Holy Spirit of the Lord Yahweh Bashim Yashai that came upon Peter. He could not, as, as Paul have said, who have resisted the will of the Lord Yahweh Bashim Yashai? Did not, Paul, did not Paul say that? Well, there you go. When they heard these things, they held their peace and glorified the Heavenly Father saying, then have the Most High also to the Gentiles, the Israelite foreigners, granted repentance unto life. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You're going to tell me that the Edomites, if this Cornelius is an Edomite, that they have been re granted repentance unto life? 
even in the Bible dictionary, it says that the nation of Edom will not receive any salvation from the Lord, Yahweh Hashem Yahushai. All right. <laughs> anyway, I've made my point. Okay, so that was just another perspective at um, using the Book of Acts, the eleventh chapter, and uh, and the joining precepts to prove once again that Cornelius was of the nation of Israel. Cornelius is an Israelite. And not just an Israelite, he was in a part of the elect of the nation of Israel. All right. So with that, this is GMS Mailbag, here to feed, feed the elect through the spirit and power of Yahweh Hashem Yahshua, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Shalom.